you saw part one of our Nagano trip, then you'll have seen that we left it off while we were staying at Kanaguya, one of Japan's coolest ryokans, which is over 250 years old. Whichever ryokan you stay at, if it has an onsen, getting up early is totally worth it because you can enjoy a relaxing morning dip before you have to eat the amazing but super filling breakfast. So, with bursting bellies and a checkout time of 10, it was time to hit the road. The plan for the rest of the trip was to stop by one of Japan's most beautiful castles, Matsumoto Jo, as well as eat local horse meat. We then go for sake tasting at a local brewery before spending the night overlooking Matsumoto City in a special mountain hotel known as Skyland Kiyomizu. The final day would see us drive through one of Nagano's most scenic roads, called Venus Line, as well as walk through a perfectly preserved 400 plus year old Edo era town. But before all of that, first stop, the world's largest wasabi farm, Dayo. The reason this doesn't look like your typical farm is because wasabi is actually one of the most difficult plants in the world to cultivate. It requires a very specific balance between climate, nutrients, humidity, and most importantly, a constant flow of fresh water. Hence, why nearly all wasabi farms are grown in or next to fresh mountain rivers and streams. The plants are so sensitive that they are even covered with black tarps from May to October to protect them from the sun. Now, despite sporting a network of walkways and bridges, a cool gift shop, and a wasabi restaurant, Dayao shouldn't be confused with the average roadside tourist hotspot. While Japan and a lot of the Western world were fighting in World War I, a rural farmer in Azumino clearly had his priorities in order and just wanted to eat unlimited wasabi. So, he founded Dayao in 1915, and since then, an emperor of Japan has visited one of the property's tea houses, no big deal, and three water mills were custom built as well for legendary filmmaker Akira Kurosawa, whose 1990 movie Dreams had scenes filmed there as well. Apart from all of that, one of the best attractions is the wasabi soft cream. Surprisingly not strong flavored, but still tasting like wasabi and was delicious. Mm, it's really good. Sweet or? Mm, it's perfect. It's really? Perfect. Mm, so good. Mm. Oh, she just ate it. <laughs> Since sunset comes early in the mountains, it was time to round out the afternoon with some sake tasting at a 150 year old sake brewery called Kamataya. Unfortunately, it was too good of a time, so we'll keep those um, details private. Next up was a quick stop by Matsumoto Castle. First built around 500 years ago, it's no surprise that it's considered both a national treasure and national historic site of Japan. Now that I think about it, Nagano is full of buildings and sites that have national designation. Let's see. From part one of our trip, we had Anorakuji Temple, national treasure. Kanaguya Ryokan, national cultural asset. Today, Matsumoto Castle, National Treasure, and National Historical Site of Japan. I feel like we've seen many... Oh, yep, never mind. In Matsumoto, one of the local specialties that many foreigners don't dare to eat is horse. And in case you're wondering, horse is surprisingly not a national treasure, so it's okay to eat. And when I say eat, I'm not just talking about cooked horse steak, but horse sashimi. Yes, raw horse. Here's a variety of cuts. I won't go into details in case you're a vegetarian or it's too much of a culture shock seeing this. But there's dozens of different ways you can eat horse at this popular izakaya. Bon appetit. After dinner, our final stop was a 1,500 meter drive up the mountain at a remote hotel called Skyland Kiyomizu, which overlooked Matsumoto. What a hidden gem.
Before returning to Tokyo on the final day, we still had time to drive along the incredible 2,000 meter high Venus Line scenic route, which had some spectacular views. And, because we clearly hadn't seen enough national treasures and cultural assets, we got greedy and squeezed in one more. Okay, so we've arrived in Naraijuku, which is a several century old post town. Now this post town is actually located in Nagano prefecture in the uh, Japanese Alps, you could call them. And so it's on what is an old highway that was called the Nakasendo and it actually connected modern day Tokyo, which at the time, hundreds of years ago, was actually called Edo. So it connected Tokyo and then it also connected it with Kyoto. Now there are couple different ways you could travel but this one the Nakasendo that this town Naraijuku is on it actually had 69 of these post towns and this is where you could obviously stop rest because it's a very long journey imagine traveling without a car and so that was back in the Edo era and the Edo era was from 1600 to 1867 I believe somewhere around there but over 250 years and then of course the Edo era ended and that's when famously Commodore Perry, it wasn't just him but he was kind of the flag bearer for helping Japan open up its borders because in the Edo era, this time when a town like this was vibrant, there was no trade with the outside world. So that's Naraijuku, one of many many post towns along the Nakasendo in mountainous Japan. Mm. Two foreigners in a small shop eating old style shaved ice. Yes. Mm. 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 No. Okay, so the reason why. Um, Bite it from with your mouth. Yeah, but. Put your mouth there. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really. Uh, you put your mouth over it. What is so some of this stuff? What are you doing? Come in. Oh, just like. I'm not bringing it like this because you're eating like this. And then trying to bring it to your mouth. Bring your mouth to it. Or bring the cup under your chin. Uh -huh. No? That's good. I think it's good. お箸の持ち方がこの間もあの議論になってこの絵の絵の通り私たちはやってるんですけど彼はこういう持ち方をするあそれは二点指示で男性に結構多いのかなあそうこれもだいだいこれはあの両方この上の端が内側に入っち
this place here, this is very old, centuries old. And so obviously what they're trying to do is preserve the cultural history of this town, preserve the style of the homes that it would have had, um, which is quite amazing. A lot of the 69 post towns that existed along this Nakasendo Highway, um, a lot of those obviously would not be existing today. They would have been, you know, forgotten or unused or just worn down, but yeah, it's pretty amazing here in Naraijuku. All these homes, all this architecture has been improved and maintained the way it was hundreds of years ago. So if you want to come to Japan and you want to actually get a real peek into the past, this is definitely a great place to do it.